Lapidico is unique in the lithium space in that it's pioneering development of lithium mica and lithium phosphate uh, uh, minerals for production of lithium chemicals, which will have extremely good environmental and social credentials associated with them, which is extremely important in, in this day and age for customers. Lapidico is developing a sustainable, vertically integrated lithium business and the completion of the definitive feasibility study for the company's vertically integrated phase one project in May this year was a key step in this development process. It includes the redevelopment of two mines within its 80% owned Caribou project in Namibia and the new design of a flotation plant with export to a chemical conversion plant in Abu Dhabi. The latter plant will utilise Lapidigo's clean tech process technologies, LMAX and LOHMAX, which together manufacture lithium hydroxide along with valuable byproducts. Joining me to discuss more is Managing Director Joe Walsh. Joe, welcome to TCN TV. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Now, Joe Lapidico issued the definitive feasibility study for its vertically integrated phase one project in May this year. Can you talk us through what are the next important steps towards the development of the company's vertically integrated lithium project? Well, it, it, the feasibility study was a real milestone for the company. And we are now focused on transitioning the project into development. And there's three key elements to be able to achieve that. Uh, we're working on a full funding solution for, uh, for the project. And we recently announced that we'd entered into a mandate arrangement with uh, Development Finance Corporation, of the part of the US government. Uh, we're also arranging offtake for our major products. Uh, and we've got a letter of intent with the German chemical company BASF for the lithium chemical, and we're working on the other chemicals as well now, and permitting. Uh, we're fully permitted in, in Namibia, but we're still working on the permitting uh, for the chemical plant in Abu Dhabi. So those are the three main streams. Okay, and the Caribbean project in Namibia, um, it is now fully permitted, and most mine development work there is complete, including a haul road to the Helicon One mine and, and also water supply there. Um, what's still to be done at Caribib and what is needed for a potential expansion of phase two development? Yeah, so we're really very much ready to go um, in Namibia. So uh, as, as you said, we're fully permitted. We've got a water extraction license. Um, the only piece of infrastructure that we need is a power line spur, which is included in, in the development. Um, and I think the other important, really important point to note with these assets is their redevelopments of former mines. And so they're brownfield developments, which gives us excellent environmental and social characteristics associated with these developments. Okay, and look, the concentrate produced in Namibia will be exported to a chemical conversion plant in Abu Dhabi that will employ Lapidico's clean tech process technologies. When do you expect Abu Dhabi permitting, um, including environmental and social impact assessment and land lease to be delivered? So we're well advanced on that now. Um, we expect that the uh, environmental social impact assessment should be completed around year end. Uh, and we expect by the end of Q1, we'll have all permits and approvals in place uh, to be able to uh, commence to construction. So that will then really leave financing and, and offtake as the, the major elements that we need to finalise. And Joe Lapidico has often talked up the inherent value of its proprietary technologies. In a language uh, those of us perhaps who are not chemical engineers can understand, what makes these technologies so special? I, th I think that it's, it is their environmental characteristics in particular. And so they're, it's, they're purely hydrometallurgical, which means that we don't need to roast or calcine. We don't have any of those very high, inten uh, high energy intensive process steps that um, typical uh, or, or conventional spodumene pro processing employs. Um, so we're not energy, that energy intensive. We have a relatively low carbon footprint or our products will have a relatively low carbon footprint associated with them. Our water usage is relatively modest um, and we have a relatively small footprint. So when it comes to all of those environmental characteristics, we see our technology is really very 21st century. 
Um, and it, they allow us to also process non-conventional minerals for lithium. So the traditional hard rock mineral for lithium has been spodumene. There are other minerals out there, the lithium micro and lithium phosphate minerals. And our process technologies allow those to be really deconstituted into their um, uh, metals, uh, individual metals, and we will then produce chemicals from them. And so we end up with a series of byproducts as well, which you don't get from spodumene, which gives us a, a more a, a better value proposition. And we have minimal waste coming off these uh, facilities. We've done waste studies, and we see an opportunity to actually use the residue to rehabilitate city landfill sites. And on that basis, we can have a zero waste facility, which is a fabulous outcome for any kind of uh, chemical or processing facility. Absolutely. Uh, now, Lapidico is also working towards a number of uptake agreements for lithium, casein, and rubidium chemicals. Are uh, any already in the bag? And, and when uh, do you think we'll be able to get more updates on the uptake front? Sure. As I mentioned, we've got, we've got a letter of intent with, uh, with BASF, the German chemical company. Uh, it's non-binding. Um, we do see uh, real benefit in diversifying our customer risks, so having more than one customer. So we are working on having uh, multiple customers for our lithium chemicals, our lithium um, hydroxide. Uh, and we're, we've also advised that we're in discussions with uh, three different companies with regard to cesium and rubidium offtake as well. So um, we're targeting to make, be able to make a final investment decision in the second quarter of calendar 2020, uh, 2021. Um, and so to be able to do that, we will need to have these offtake arrangements in place. So watch this space um, over the course of the next six months or so, uh, we would envisage that we'll be making some real headway in this area. Okay, and final question, Joe. Project financing initiatives took a major step forward in October this year with the receipt of an indicative non-binding term sheet from the United States International De Development Finance Corporation with respect uh, to providing debt funding for uh, the phase one of the project. What other funding is Lapidico considering to help finance the mines in Namibia and the chemical conversion plant in Abu Dhabi? Yeah, so we've very much taken the view that we want to get the highest quality uh, and most affordable debt that can be available. And because of these excellent environmental and social credentials that we've got, we can be looking to development financing institution funding like provided by DFC. And as I say, it's some of the most competitively fund, uh, uh, debt funding available uh, globally. Um, so we are in discussions with other DFIs. Um, we're also going, looking at export credit finance. Um, and uh, for Abu Dhabi, we're, the, there is commercial lending that we'll be looking at as well. We are also in discussion with um, strategic industry players with regard to um, uh, getting involved as a stakeholder in the project. And that's been a tried and tested way for lithium companies to be uh, securing additional funding for their projects. And then there will likely be a proportion of equity, but we want to get the, the core elements of this funding package in place before we look, would be looking to secure that. Well, Joe, thank you very much for the update today and all the best for the development ahead. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching. Now, if you like what you see, please be sure to like and share the video or drop us a comment. Tell us who you would like to see next and what you would like me to ask them. Or if you're an investor, send us an email so we can keep you in the loop with the latest ideas to empower.